I'm Tracy Bankster with today's Record News Watch. Former City of Kingston cop Timothy Matthews was arraigned this afternoon on charges contained in a 13-count indictment, accusing him of stealing a total of $212,000 from the city, the county, and Ulster Savings Bank. Charges against Matthews include grand larceny, tampering with public records, and defrauding the government. Prosecutors say the former top city detective stole the money over a 10-year period from evidence lock and from government-run anti-drug operations. Matthews pleaded not guilty at his arraignment and was released on $100,000 bond. Matthews could face up to 15 years in prison if he's convicted. Reporter Adam Bosch will have further details here at Record Online and in tomorrow's Times-Herald Record. No one's getting their hopes up given past disappointments, but supporters of casino gambling in the Catskills think an important hurdle has been removed with word that the federal government has decided to drop the requirement that Indian tribes can only build casinos within commuting distance of a reservation. It means now dormant Catskill casino applications may be revived. That's encouraging news to those who gathered at yesterday's union labor rally in Monticello, including town of Thompson Councilman Richard Sush. We, we've been down this road before and uh, we uh, will keep working towards that end, uh, but uh, we'll see, we'll have, really have to see what happens. Um, the people out here would, would love to see this become reality, wouldn't they? It provide a lot of jobs for a lot of the folks here and, and elsewhere, and uh, it would be a great thing for this uh, county to, to have uh, some casinos around here and provide some decent jobs for people. We need jobs desperately. The rule change will help. In the town of Thompson casino applications for the St. Regis Mohawks and the Stockbridge Muncie Band of Mohegan Indians. Reporter Victor Whitman will have uh, more on the rule change and its possible implications for Sullivan County in tomorrow's Times Herald Record. The casino development provided some upbeat news during last evening's rain-soaked labor union rally for the middle class held along Route 42 in the town of Thompson. Representatives from a variety of worker unions said Corporate greed and economic instability have put collective bargaining rights in jeopardy. Here in New York, there are bills that affect the public sector worker as well as the private sector worker. And we're here across all venues, all different positions, firefighters, teachers, police officers, DPW workers. We're all here for the same thing, and that is to protect our individual rights and the rights of the working class. Rally organizers say organized uh, labor is under siege throughout the country, with governments pushing for pension and health insurance givebacks. They'd been away from home for eight months, an assignment uh, that included a six-month tour in Iraq. And last night, 15 members of the 105th Security Forces Squadron, based at Stewart Airport, were greeted by family, friends, and members of local veterans groups following their return to Stewart. The 15 squadron members had been assigned to a unit that provided air base security, helped keep supply routes open, and took part in missions to search for insurgents. And the guardsmen said, they were happy to complete the mission and even happier to be home. And it was a day of mixed emotions in St. Joseph's Catholic School in Middletown today as faculty, staff, students, and alumni gathered for the final day of classes at a school that's been a Middletown institution since 1888. St. Joseph's is one of four Catholic schools in Orange County that are closing this month. Victims of declining revenue and enrollments and loss of support from the archdiocese. St. Joseph's principal Jennifer Langford said the decision was made to make the final day of class a day of celebration. And I wanted to make today a day of happiness for the children and the staff instead of a day of sadness. So it's mixed emotions because it is a sad thing that's happening to us, but at the same time, St. Joe's has been family oriented. It's all about the students, and that's what today is all about. To among those walking the soon-to-be-empty halls today, former St. Joseph's students who have fond memories of days gone by. It is a sad day. Um, you know, I know things happen for a reason. I used to work here, so, you know, this was inevitable. You know, the economy hit it very badly, so um, we're just hoping that we can all move on. It's very bittersweet. Um, it's a family. It's not a school to me. This is a family. A time capsule was buried this afternoon in front of St. Joseph's Church next to the school. It'll serve as a tribute to all those who pass through its doors. 
Well, tomorrow should be another day of mostly good weather. It will be sunny and pleasant uh, for much of the day with the highs up around 80 degrees. Clouds will move in late in the day. Friday will be cloudy with showers and temperatures will top out in the upper 70s and low 80s. Stay on top of uh, what's happening locally and worldwide by picking up tomorrow's Times Herald record and keep clicking back here at Record Online for news when it breaks. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.